this scenario is around that key individual who uh, over time again has has helped bring the organization to where where it is uh, but now as the organization has matured has most of that information and and so uh, helping become less of a single maybe a single point of failure and, and and kind of upskilling the rest of the organization to help solve the types of scenarios that, that person knows. Think, think if somebody knows um, how to work different areas of, of a manufacturing line and, and these are maybe old machines and, and, and so uh, that knowledge being in that person's head that they just have to you know, tweak this little uh if they, they tighten this, it eventually gets uh, loose a little bit. And if they just tighten this, and boom, we're back to normal. Those types of little, even nuggets of information go a long way to helping the organization kind of reduce that single point of failure. So, Josh, what, kind of talk through uh, how you guys went through this and some of the results you're seeing. Right. Yeah, exactly. This. So this is, um, this is a very similar process to the example that I laid out uh, before. And in this case, um, Richard uh, has a ton of knowledge and it's been accumulated over 20 years or more um, with, within the organization and is also uh, very broad. So infrastructure information, process information, coding information, uh, he's a full stack developer and he knows a lot and has gathered that information over a long time. So how do we make that accessible to everybody so that one, um, it's easier to get to that information to God forbid something ever happened, uh, and we lose access to that information. It's not, it's not lost because as, as great of a job as he does of documenting things, certainly there's just knowledge there that, um, that we don't want to lose. So, so going through that process, we, we went and identified uh, all the best sources of information that uh, has been documented and augmented that information with interviews with, with uh, Richard, with the expert, and, tr and creating transcripts of, that, of those interviews, um, as well as uh, looking at all the different support requests that we've, that we've uh, encountered. We limited that window to over the last five years uh, Going back more than five years may not be as helpful. The system changes a lot over time. So, so looking at that information and looking at the policies, we index that information um, and then make it available to be incorporated into an AI workflow. Um, once we get that information and made it available, the process looked very much um, like, like I described earlier uh, with sort of being sister to a power automate flow so that when new support tickets are created, it would kick off a flow that would look at the, the request in the support ticket and then go look at previous support tickets that have been, um, that have been executed on, uh, emails, uh, transcript information, company process information, customer specific information, sort of the same, a lot of the same buckets that I laid out before. To being able to have all of the, that information categorized and available allows us to, to pull really targeted information based on what that support request is coming in. Once we have that information, we can, again, grade it, filter out any information that may have been uh, erroneously pulled in, um, draft a response, and then again, with the Power Automate uh, flow attached to it, surface that that draft of a response to our expert through Teams and or Outlook. I mean, we could do it either way, but through Teams, and then um, have him adjust the the answer. Look at the answer, approve it. Maybe it's perfect. Doesn't need any modifications. Maybe there's a tweak here or there. We want to capture that tweak. We want to feed it back into the system, so and and mark it as the approved answer, and and grade it in a way so that it's uh, it has a higher weight when we are pulling uh, sources of information in the future. So, 
doing something like that is very helpful to uh, respond to support requests quickly and to make that response uh, um, consistent and information and to free up our internal resources to do other important things. Um, so that's very helpful. One of the other things that we did was um, we went through this process of, of gathering the information and curating it and, and all these steps. How else can we leverage it outside of just a port ticket? So we also built a chat bot around that information so that internal users can just go ask questions. So they may this may not be support ticket driven. They may just have a question that came up in their day to day. They can go ask the Hey Richard chatbot about that about their question and get a really good response back. Um, and that's just the beginning of it. I mean, we we have plans to take this further and further. There's lots of uh, power being unlocked by having that information indexed and available uh, in various workflows in new in new ways in exciting ways, in different ways than we could before. Anything in particular you're you're excited about in the in the what's next? Um, in the what's next, I would say that in, in continuing to improve the feedback system, um, continuing to create metrics around the the generated answers so that we can compare and see the progress of the system as it improves. I think to me, that is a very exciting place. Um, and yeah. then eventually just that building more automation off on top of it. Um, so that again, not only where are we addressing support tickets uh, in a more efficient way, but also continuing to automate processes within the organization based off different interactions. And, and there's there's lots of places that AI can be plugged into those workflows to improve them. Yeah, I think about even the access of uh, data, right? We, we, to simplify things in the pilot, we picked five years, but, you know, for different problems that may change what, what's relevant. And so I think automating that, that data curation for in the grading certainly uh, even improve those answers because they'll be more relevant uh, the, the closer maybe the, that the time is. That's right. Yeah, it'll help us identify. There, I mean, there could be holes in our documentation or in, in any processes documentation. Uh, so using AI to help identify those holes or conflicts is very powerful and, and really right in line with, with types of problems that uh, the generative AI can help solve.